In this video, I'll be talking about pentose phosphate pathway. Pentose phosphate pathway is one of the most important biochemical pathway in our body because it generates reducing equivalent, which is NADPH, and that can be used for several reductive biosynthesis pathways like fatty acid biosynthesis. But before understanding the pentose phosphate pathway, we should ask three questions. Where does it occur? When does it occur? And how does it occur? So the context is super important. So let's just try to understand the context of pentose phosphate pathway and its necessity in our body. So our body is like a mega factory. So it has our, our own production house, own warehouse, and from there, its products are delivered into the marketplace or the places where there is demand. So our body has also energy demand, and the energy in order to cope up with the energy demand, there are several biochemical pathways which cross talk between each other in a context dependent manner to fuel our body with energy and that that's what keep us going and these biochemical pathways are actually categorized under simplistic chemical reactions like oxidoreduction reactions condensation reactions group transfer reactions isomerization reactions etc and all these things takes place inside our body in an enzyme dependent manner right now, among all these reaction schemes, one of the interesting and important reaction scheme is oxidoreduction type reaction. And in this situation, somebody is losing electron and getting oxid oxidized, and somebody is gaining electron and getting reduced. So inside our body, the reduction reaction requires enzymes, and second of all, neither reducing elect uh, reducing equivalent, which would give electron. Basically, body needs an electron donor. The most popular and most important electron donor inside our body is basically NADPH. Now, NADPH can uh, donate its electron and thereby the substances could get reduced. And this we would look in details in which biochemical pathway there is usage of NADPH. But for now on, let us try to understand that NADPH is required in the body. So, body should have a production scheme by which it can produce NADPH in a consistent manner. Whenever there is necessity of NADPH, it can generate. So, generally, NADPH is required for fatty acid biosynthesis, detoxification of xenobiotics, ROS production, and also uh, the ox to combat oxidative stress. So, in our body, there should be a steady scheme, a steady biochemical pathway by which NADPH can be produced and that biochemical pathway is nothing but pentose phosphate pathway right now so key importance of pentose phosphate pathway that it can give rise to NADPH which can be used in several contexts and second important aspect is it can give rise to nucleotides and it can help in nucleotide biosynthetic pathway because in our cell in order to produce energy or various other aspects let's, let's say for cell division you need nucleotides because new dna or new rna need to be synthesized so the nucleotides has the sugar part and the sugar part is provided by the ribose 5 phosphate in the pentose phosphate pathway so in that context pentose phosphate pathway is also important for nucleotide biosynthesis now we would look at pentose phosphate pathway in very uh, not much details but in a overview so the key aspect of pentose phosphate pathway starts with glucose 6 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate gets converted into several intermediates some of them are 6 phosphogluconate and ribose 5 phosphate and ultimately it produces ribose 5 phosphate and in this process of generating intermediates in an en enzyme dependent manner they produce nadph so the NADP is getting reduced to NADPH and the NADPH is then going to be used as reducing agent and the ribose 5 phosphate would be then used for nucleotide biosynthesis. Now you need to understand that this in order to give rise to reducing product in a consistent manner or producing nucleotide biosynth uh, nucleotide in a consistent manner this path we need to go on and on and on so there is, should be a recycle mechanism so the recycle mechanism is from ribulose 5 phosphate to glucose 6 phosphate and it it can 
regenerate glucose 6 phosphate which could be further channeled into the pentose phosphate pathway to generate the following products so clearly there are two phases one is oxidative phase which would give rise to the necessary product and there is a reductive phase the reductive phase we can understand as a recycling phase like by which we can it can generate the raw material and can use up the raw material again so we talk about the oxidative phase first because this is the important phase and reductive phase definitely it is important but not so important in a conceptual manner so the main raw material for the oxidative phase is glucose 6 phosphate now the glucose 6 phosphate would be first converted to 6 phosphoglucono delta lactone which is an intermediate by glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase as the name suggests the enzyme is dehydrogenase dehydrogenation is almost equivalent to oxidation right so this glucose 6 phosphate is getting oxidized and something in parallel has to get reduced right and the re thing that is getting reduced is nothing but nadp which is get getting reduced to nadph now this nadph which is produced in this oxidative phase of pentose phosphate pathway can be used in several other biochemical pathways you can see in phosphoglucono delta lactone there is keto group whereas in the glucose 6 phosphate there is a uh, alcohol group right so there is a alcohol to ketone oxidation and there would be further oxidation steps by which 6 phosphoglucono delta lactone is converted into 6 phosphogluconate by the enzyme lactonase and further with another set of dehydrogenase enzymes which is 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase ribulose 5 phosphate is produced now again there is a dehydrogenation reaction that means something is getting oxidized and you can clearly see at this step another nadph would be produced which would be an important reduction uh, equivalent so something has to be oxidized at the same time and co2 is released in this process because it's also a decarboxylation step down reaction and here again the alcohol group is oxidized to a ketone group and now we understand at oxidative phase how in a series in a serial manner the nadph is produced now after that a isomerase enzyme convert ribulose to ribose 5-phosphate now this ribose 5-phosphate can enter and give rise to nucleotides and it contributes to the sugar moiety of the nucleotides now after that the we talk about that how nadph could be used to combat ROS the nadph which is produced in the pentose phosphate pathway so these are reactant oxi uh, reactive oxygen species which could cause harm in our body so body need to counter the reactive oxygen species and in order to counter reactive oxygen species body converts reactive oxygen species to less harmful species by the enzyme glutathione peroxidase and this glutathione peroxidase need to be need glutathione and the glutathione need to be reduced in a cycle depend cyclic manner otherwise the gsh peroxidase enzyme won't work so oxidized glutathione need to be reduced and definitely the reduction reaction needs nadph as an electron donor so definitely gsh reductase which is an enzyme in an nadph dependent manner it would reduce glutathione so where does this nadph come from this nadph is actually obtained from pentose phosphate pathway so whenever our body is facing so much of oxidative stress or anything then pentose phosphate pathway is getting upregulated and pentose phosphate pathway is generating a hell lot of nadph which could be used by the ROS scavenging machinery and thereby our body could get protection right let's talk about fatty acid biosynthesis pathway in the fatty acid biosynthesis pathway there are several metabolic steps where nadph is used as a reducing equivalent to reduce something right now and the nadph comes from pentose phosphate pathway so we can understand that in this metabolic pathway fatty acid biosynthesis the pentose phosphate pathway derived nadph is so important so without nadph this reductive biosynthesis pathway won't occur we talk about another important component like cholesterol cholesterol synthesis takes place from hmg coa in the endoplasmic reticulum uh, 
membrane, uh, the key enzyme, the rate limiting step is HMG CoA reductase, reducing HMG CoA into mevalonate. And mevalonate gets converted to cholesterol in a series of reactions. So, this is the key rate limiting step. And again, HMG CoA reductase is a reductase enzyme. So, it also needs a redu redu uh, reduction equivalent, which is obtained from NADPH, and the NADPH is produced from pentose phosphate pathway. So, in multiple different biosynthetic pathways and protect protecting our body against ROS, NADPH, which is derived from pentose phosphate pathway, is super important. Now, till now, we have talked about the oxidative phase a little bit, but not about the reductive phase. Now, if you remember, we talked that reductive phase is a recycling phase. So, you recycle the glucose 6-phosphate again such that you can channel it into the pathway and produce more NADPH or uh, nu generate nucleotides, right? So, this whole process is a bit complicated and requires several metabolic intermediates. And these metabolic intermediates can be also channeled into other biochemical pathways. So, the ribose 5-phosphate get converted to cetohyptulose 5-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate is generated from that and fructose and glucose are pretty much similar, both 6-carbon, they could be converted to glucose 6-phosphate via isomerization reaction. So These steps are actually catalyzed by transaldolase and transketolase. So, basically, these uh, steps are uh, aldol condensation in a chemical point of view and the last step is isomerization in alternative fashion there could be production of xylulose 5-phosphate from the ribose 5-phosphate and there are a series of metabolic intermediates which would ultimately lead to production of glucose 6-phosphate so the metabolic intermediates that i talked about are not so important but what is important is from ribose 5-phosphate they they can recycle that and channel that into glucose 6-phosphate again so th such that this whole process works like a cycle and it can generate NADPH as a reduction equivalent, right? And that is how the oxidative phase is a key production phase and the uh, reductive phase is the key recycling phase and that is how this scheme of NADPH production goes on inside our body and it fuels our body with a lot of reducing equivalence and also protects our body by augmenting rock ROS scavenging mechanisms. And now the concept comes is glucose 6-phosphate, which is the uh, ingredient which can be both used in glycolysis or in pentose phosph phosphate pathway. So when does body choose to channel the glucose 6-phosphate into glycolysis pathway or when does it prefer to put it in a pentose phosphate pathway? It all depends upon demand and context. Let's say now body is undergoing a fasted state. So body needs energy. So in that situation, glucose 6-phosphate would be converted to pyruvate. And in this process of glycolysis, body would generate some energy. And it would provide the body with energy. But let's say now we are in a fed state. And in this situation, body don't need any more energy right now because there is already energy excess and now body need to synthesize multiple different uh, substances like cholesterol like fatty acids etc etc so body need reducing equivalents in that situation pentose phosphate pathway would be preferred and glucose 6 phosphate would be channeled into pentose phosphate pathway instead of glycolysis so how the metabolic substances or metabolic intermediate would be used inside our body it always depends upon the demand and the context so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you